All right, I'm going to give a talk. Um, it's I've got a few ideas which have been like brooding in my brain for the last six months, uh, working on a number of projects with um, my the, the team that I'm on um, at at Node Source. Uh, and this is this talk is actually not even for you. Um, it's it's a practice run for me giving a big giving a big spiel to my my team. Um, uh, so um, please bear with me, and I hope that it doesn't go too long. Uh, I literally just wrote it like while we're doing this, and so also forgive the styles because I like the, the the CSS for this is that uh, <laughs> I just wrote that. So um, okay, so uh, let's make this full screen. Eh? Okay, so one of the big things which is interesting about the Node.js community is that uh, it really strives to help you do modular development. And it's, very different, uh, it's a very different mindset to what you get um, when you're working with other communities. Uh, so people are quite startled by this at first. You know, they see something like a Node modules tree uh, or they see NPM installing the entire universe. Uh, just so, just so that you can uppercase a string, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty mad. Um, but there's a lot of benefits to this, and um, you know, people pe people love this shit, um, you know, because it, it obeys this whole idea of you know Unix philosophy, you know, do one thing well, single responsibility, uh, and there's this thing that the, the node culture of extreme modularity. Um, so you know, the idea is that we're building apps up out of like lots of little pieces. It's like you know, plugging together Lego blocks. Um, and some examples of this, where this is like uh, working really well in the community um, is uh, the level DB community. So they've got a modular database. So rather than having something like MySQL or Postgres or PouchDB even, um, where it comes with uh, all of the features that you could possibly need, it gives you nothing. Uh, and you just have to add them. So it doesn't have select statements, it doesn't have anything. Um, but in the process, you learn a lot about databases. I've probably talked about this a hundred times. But I love LevelDB. Modular database works really well. There's a similar movement um, uh, by some guys doing the thing called StackGL, which is kind of like a modular version of 3JS. Um, I recommend people look into this. It's a, it's a very awesome project, and there's lots of good stuff there. It allows you to um, you know, do anything without any of the constraints of, um, that are baked into 3JS. Uh, there's, and out of that has also come this thing called, I think it's called SciJS, um, which a lot of the stuff which was originally built for um, the StackGL stuff ends up being um, just useful for um, doing mathematics. So they've created this um, SciJS thing. But, um, yeah, yeah, and NPM is the enabler here. Uh, it allows, enables us to build applications out of modules. Um, you know, it, you don't have the dependency hell that you end up with. Um, in other systems because it allows you to have multiple versions of the same module working uh, at the same time. I've got a thing which enables you to do this even more crazily so you can build your entire app out of like little small pieces. Uh, and and um, no, uh, NPM, that shouldn't be capitalized, I'm sorry. Um, but NPM has, um, they're banking on people wanting to build um, private modules. Uh, this is a thing on Enterprise and, and NPM. So when you build things library first, oh, this is all introduction, I'm sorry, uh, uh, you know, it, ma it makes things easier to write, helps you isolate the problem, and you, you're generally working with a clean slate, you don't have all the crap that's in your application to work with. Uh, you know, you know, it re results in higher quality code, better documentation, better tests, it's all like focused. But it's not all rosy. Uh, all these things which I mentioned before don't come for free. Uh, and I've, I've found that like when I get an idea, I'm like, oh, I'm going to build a module for that. It takes me at least six hours to build a module because, you know, you build it once and then you think of all these edge cases and then you've got to write documentation, you've got to have tests. Uh, you know, you'll release the first version, it's always wrong. Uh, you've got to release a new version. Um, so it, even, even just for a small module, um, it, it takes many hours. Uh, you know, <coughs> And something I've discovered is that there's, actually well, these are out of order, but anyway, um, building applications is a very different thing to building libraries. So, um, and the, the problem is that applications usually don't um, decompose into this, uh, decompose? Compose. Um, probably use these interchangeably. Um, 
compose into this sort of tree structure which you get in NPM where you've got sort of one thing which has one responsibility and another thing which has another sort of sub-responsibility. With a real-world application, you have a whole bunch of stuff which is all messy, it's disgusting. Uh, you know, this piece needs to know about this thing and you only learned about that at the last minute when the client actually used the website for the first time two years after you started the project. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's hard to build apps in, in that structure, a tree structure is awesome, so, um, but it's 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 very difficult to actually achieve it um, in a library, at least on the first go. Is that my one second left? Oh my god. Uh, well, I'm going to keep going. I'll be very quick. This is one of the, another problem is everything is broken all of the time. So this is a problem with doing things with with a thousand libraries is that you end up with just I spend so long just fixing bugs. My life is just bug fixing. And this is because, it is, it's horrible. Uh, and it's because I'm trying to not be an arsehole. It's like the, the, the thing, I, I feel like it's my responsibility, if I'm gonna be um, using somebody's code and I discover a problem with it, I, it's my responsibility. Um, it's like the way I pay the, pay the person for giving me the code um, is that I'm gonna at least try to fix the, the module. So um, that's sort of like my don't be an arsehole um, sort of policy. Um, but, and a lot of the time, um, yeah, I think that there's, this is the reason why we end up building um, overcomplicated applications. And it's usually, um, we think, oh, I'm gonna build a, a library to solve some problem um, because I'm gonna reuse it. But uh, how often do you end up building a library and then not even use it once? You know, this happens to me all of the time. Pretty much my entire GitHub is just, these are things which I thought would be reusable but weren't. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, the problem is premature modularization. I think this happens to, uh, a lot of the time, and I think another way of um, talking about that is um, Yagni, which is you aren't going to need it. Um, so, uh, so often you'll, you'll read, I read technical books, and they've, they've got all these things about like trying to break things up into a single responsibility principle, use, use philosophy, all this kind of stuff. Um, but I feel like they're optimizing for you know, having an incompetent team, um, because there are a lot of really bad um, developers out there. Um, but you know, in reality, uh, I've found, at least in the teams I've been working in, that we have too many chefs as, as opposed to um, not enough chefs. Um, you know, they optimize for under-engineering as opposed to uh, over-engineering. And this is something which I've seen uh, a lot of. We have too, too, too much engineering. Um, you know, we, we often end up building the wrong thing for the right reasons. Like we've got all of the, the back, you know, all of the theory behind it, but um, it ends up being just a waste of time. Um, you know, when, when we build things into modules, we're, we're an uh, OO helps us, uh, like encourages you to, to hide mess, um, uh, hide complexity. But I feel like um, uh, that's not the same as removing complexity. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do there. Um, and uh, one of the things I've been trying to get my team to do is uh, stop hiding mess in modules. Just expose it, leave it in the file. Um, because if it's there and it's messy, it's more likely to get cleaned up. But if it's broken out and it's put somewhere and nobody looks at it for six months, then sure, great, you know, it's a black box, it works, but then what happens when it doesn't? Nobody knows how to work it, or even the author. Um, if you have the code there, at least people are constantly scanning past it going, oh God, that is a horrible piece of code. Uh, and eventually one day somebody will, will most likely fix it if it stays in the file. Um, so. When you modularize, it increases cognitive overhead. Like, you know, who's had to try to figure out what the hell's going on by having to click through directory, 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 open a file, directory. It's so irritating. Just, and, and you know, you open the file and it's got three lines in it. And it's just requiring some other file. And you've got to keep doing this. Uh, or it's a, it's a whole module which does that. Um, and I've, I've stood up here before and claimed that this was a good thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> So something, something I've discovered is that it's a lot easier to understand what the hell's going on if the code is just a little bit messy. So like I've, I've found working with legacy code bases sometimes is way easier to get shit done because the code's just, it's all there. It's not spread out across a thousand modules. Um, there was a conversation we had just like last night. One, one, one of the guys who was, um, he wants to make his things into little small files his thing was, well, I hate scrolling. I'm going to just have a one-function file. But the other guy said, you know, oh, I hate I hate scrolling through all of your modules. 
You know, we, you know, we literally have a, a file, a folder this big full of this guy's modules. So and it's very irritating. So the idea is optimize for deletion. Don't break things out when, unless you absolutely need to. Less code's better. Make less files. Make less functions. Make them longer, but make them clean. Um, but not too clean. Because um, the only constant is change, and there's a high cost to you building the wrong structure as opposed to having no structure at all. So um, keep your code dirty. Keep it sort of... Don't make decisions. This is the idea. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, don't make decisions. If, if you don't have, if, if you don't, um, have, point it, yeah, cost of the wrong structure. If you'll often, you'll be like, oh, this thing's cool. I can break this thing out and build it. That's like what engineers do. They want to organize things. They want to structure things. They want to make things reusable. But the point is, it almost, you, you're never going to reuse it. Uh, and not only that, you're making it harder to change shit later. Um, by, by organizing it. It seems like counterintuitive uh, and it's like it's the opposite of what books will tell you and a lot of you are probably thinking God, this guy's, this guy's like really offensive. He's offending my whole career. He's off. <laughs> um, you know, this is what happens. You read these books and you feel, like you, you, you feel like a hopeless person because when you try to follow the instructions and you try to do things properly, you try to do test-driven development, you get fired because you didn't get anything done. This has happened to me plenty of times. It's happened to Sebastian. I know, like, this is, this is like these people who work uh, and try really hard to do the right thing, get fired. <laughs> uh, so keep your code dirty, build a, mon build a monolith first, w like let the code sit there, mature, let it be, let it like, um, let, let it live for a age. while until you do, until it, what? Let it age. Let it age, yes, exactly. So, uh, and once, once something has sort of survived a few, um, you know, culling processes, um, then you can break it out and make it into a, a thing which deserves to live on its own. Um, so, and yeah, defer decisions. Don't make decisions. Just get the simplest thing that'll work. That's the end of my talk. <laughs>